In Canada's Banff National Park, census takers on horseback. They're counting noses in the annual survey of animals in this wildlife sanctuary. And they discover old citizens and new ones, like this bighorn sheep and her lamb. The park warden who's making the census tempts the mother sheep to come closer for a snack. But the lamb isn't too sure about the stranger. They're incredibly nimble and sure-footed, these mountain sheep, using footholds little more than an inch wide. They can scamper up steep rock faces 50 feet high. Bears are numerous in the park, and they too are checked by the survey. The purpose of the census is to make sure the balance of nature is being maintained. If one species is multiplying too quickly for the available food, some may have to be killed to lessen the possibility of disease and overgrazing. Other animals may need special protection to prevent their dying out. Stand up and be counted. This young coyote pup doesn't seem to want to cooperate. Many of the animals aren't too easy to find unless you know where to look. Here are deer twins, sleeping peacefully and oblivious of the inquisitive man from the government. But their mother is close by and she keeps a watchful eye open. Pausing now and then, the warden jots down his findings. Most of the animals in the park, like these buffalo, generally stick to the same areas. And so it's possible to make accurate estimates of their population. Sometimes on his rounds, the census man does a good turn. Here's a baby elk, wandering around without its mother. It must be an orphan, so it needs special attention, even though it may resist at first. But soon its troubles will be over. The warden knows the family status of most of the animals in his care. He remembers seeing a mother elk who had lost her calf. Maybe she will accept this one as a replacement. There, in a clearing, is the mother elk. The shy, orphaned calf is introduced to her, and they hit it off perfectly. And so they simply adopt each other. Besides using horse and truck, the warden has a boat to help him get around the huge park. Here, he's on the lookout for moose, and it doesn't take him long to find some. They're excellent swimmers, and they eat underwater vegetation as well as twigs and shrubs. Observations ashore and afloat show the warden that many of the cow moose have calved since he was last around. And he notes it all down as part of the annual census at Banff National Park. Energetic and continuous conservation measures make sure that there will always be plenty of animals in this picturesque wildlife sanctuary. A truckload of something very special arrives at Hastings Elementary School, Vancouver. And there's no shortage of helpers when it comes to the unloading. They've been waiting for this for days now, thought it would never come. But it's here at last a whole collection of animal visitors from Stanley Park, one of Canada's most famous zoos. And the zoo's curator, Alan Best, has come along to explain these strange creatures, like the springy little wallaby from Australia. What a wonderful way to have a natural history lesson. Here's a toucan with its great big bill, a weapon and a scoop for food. And here's a penguin, a bird in evening dress. At first the children were wary of the animals, but now they can't get close enough to examine and pet them. Even the weird looking giant anteater doesn't frighten them. He's a highly specialized fellow, this, with a long tongue perfectly adapted to eating ants. The zoo can't supply the half million ants he needs every day, so they've taught him to enjoy dog food and milk. 
and the youngsters are fascinated as Mr. Best shows them how sharp nature has made the anteater's claws so he can rip open anthills. You'd think snakes would horrify the children, but Mr. Best explains that these two baby rock pythons, five and eight feet long, aren't a bit poisonous. And it isn't long before a brave girl volunteers to wear one as a necklace. Nothing to it, really. Now everybody wants a wriggly handful of python to play with. The children find it not only great fun, but also a memorable lesson. For there's nothing like first-hand contact to give a better understanding of the strange beings that inhabit the earth. So it's with reluctance that they go back to their ordinary classes. But maybe there'll be another animal day before too long. About half a million dogs live in Greater Montreal, and at least that many cats. Every few minutes, somewhere in the city, someone's pet tries to cross a busy street, and sometimes the attempt to brave the traffic ends in disaster. There's no need to stand around and watch helplessly when a quick telephone call to the SPCA will bring one of their mobile patrol vans to the rescue. This time, he's not hurt too badly, but he needs emergency attention, and the animal ambulance won't lose any time taking him to headquarters where he can get it. The mobile units cover every part of Canada's largest city. Almost every day, some cat, out of curiosity or chased by a dog, finds itself up a tree and unable to get down. Another emergency but it's just routine for the Canadian Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Besides dealing with accidents, the Society operates a clinic providing free treatment for the pets of those who can't afford to pay. And the variety of patients is endless. There's nothing sadder than a sick dog. Last week he was frisky and full of life. Now he's listless and drowsy, off his feed. Animals suffer from almost as many diseases as humans, but fortunately many can be cured, and some can be prevented. The dog's most deadly enemy is distemper. Once caught, it's hard to cure, but it can be prevented by vaccination. The SPCA urges that all city dogs be vaccinated early. This one wasn't, and examination quickly confirms the vet's suspicions. There's nothing the vet can do but tell the family they are about to lose a faithful friend. There are happier scenes at the SPCA, especially when a boy comes in to adopt a new dog. Thousands of stray or unwanted dogs, cats and other pets end up at the society's shelter every year. Those that aren't claimed by their owners may be bought for just five dollars. For boy and dog alike, a very satisfactory arrangement. The only problem is making a choice. Yes, now I'm sure. That's the one I want. Not the big one, the little fellow. He's just got to be mine. What should I call him? Does he have a name already? Maybe Spot or Butch. That's it, Butch. But just a minute. Suppose they aren't bringing me the right one. I want Butch, the little brown one. Yes, that's the one. And so boy meets dog, and Butch gets a new master who has promised to look after him well, following the advice of the SPCA. He'll brush and comb him regularly and provide a comfortable bed, plenty to eat and drink, and lots of healthy exercise. Life can be hard for a dog in the city, but not if he has a good master. So Butch and his master begin a new friendship thanks to the SPCA, which for more than a century has been devoted to making life better for every kind of animal.